here we go again. Another Christmas soap I'm going to be making today, which is called Christmas Tree Farm. And I made these little Christmas trees. I've got a bowl full of these little Christmas trees here. So these will be going on the top. And I am going to be using my old mould. This one because I'm making these like the little chunks that I used to do a few years ago because these won't fit on an inch cut. So I use my tank, which is an inch wide for my regular bars from my Nurture five pound mold. But this mold, I make chunks. So they come out like little rectangular chunks, which will fit one of these perfectly on the top. So that's why I'm using this mold today. I've got to cut one of these in half because I've only got 24 because my mold only has 24 cavities. So I'm just going to chop one in half. So I've got 25. So that's that. So I'm just going to do a normal, uh, normal, a white base as usual. And I'm going to do a little red swirl using a little bit. Can you see that in here? Yeah, just about. A little bit of a red oxide. I cannot for the life of me find the Australian reef red clay anymore, um, which is jam packed full of red oxide and kaolin, and it's a clay. But the next best thing is just a straight red oxide. It's pretty much the same colour, but it's obviously not a clay. It's just a straight oxide. So I'm going to be using that as a swirl. So we've got the red, white and the green. Um, what am I waiting for now? Oh, yeah. I've just got to pour my liquid oils into my um, melted solid oils and we can get going. So I'll see you in a second. OK, so I'm going to pour the lye into this solution of oils here. So this bowl does a perfect amount of soap for the mould I'm using. If you can remember, or if you go back through some old videos, you'll see me using these and this mould together all the time, because that's what I used to make all my soaps like that. But, you know, I only had one of these moulds, which, yeah, I could have done with about 10. So that's why I went for the nurture ones in the end, because I thought they actually they'd just be a bit more practical with my tank cutter and all that. So these soaps that I'm making today will have to be cut on my individual cutter, which isn't so great. But... That's what we're going to do so we can use up these little embeds. So I'm just going to stick blend this up. Okay, that will do for now. So again, remember, if you're making soap, generally wear long sleeved tops. I just only have a short sleeve on today because the alternative is to put my jumper on or my sweater, as you would call them in the States. We call them jumpers here. <laughs> so, yeah, it's too warm, so I'm going to just uh, have to be careful. Okay, so here is going to be our red swirl. I don't want too much red. Leave that to the side a second. I need some titanium dioxide, don't I? Do you have it mixed? Let me just grab that. Okay, so I'm just going to put that into my base. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Guys, I thought I was doing a green swirl. I just forgot what I was doing there for a second. Okay, never mind me, my hormonal self. Let's go back to where we were. Okay. Just stick around this in. Sure that's mixed in nicely. And then pour in most of the fragrance. I'm using again 1.9% fragrance oil as part of the weight of my uh, oils, not the overall recipe. So 1.9 as per weight of the oil is about 50 grams in this, so around two ounces or so. Okay. A very light trace. So I'm going to just pour the base, mix the red, and then we'll um, get this well made. And then, what's that? A little speck of paper. Get out. Oh, 
It's mold so easy to work with with this bowl. I've forgotten actually. I just had to uh, remember where to mark my mold for when I do the cut tomorrow. It's been a long time since I've taken this one out of the storeroom. Oh, this smells really nice. So it's like a Siberian fir needle. Um, it's quite herbal. It's not your typical sort of pine fresh, you know, loom cleaner type of a scent. It's got a really nice, definite Christmas tree scent. I, oh, I love this. This is really, really nice. And this is a Candle Shack fragrance again. This is their Christmas tree fragrance. I just call mine Christmas tree farm. So it's just a one fragrance oil. But yeah, if you want something nice for your candles as well, this is just lovely. Let's leave that for a sec. And so um, I remembered to find my oilcloth out. Somebody left a comment on the last video about putting the oilcloth down. I forgot, and I, I thought, yeah, I know I've got a reel of that somewhere. So yes, perfect. I've also just ordered myself a new stainless steel table. So I'll be using that as well in the middle of the room. So I've moved this workshop around and then realized I actually did need some more table space. So I just ordered it yesterday. So should be here tomorrow. Okay, stick blending this oxide then. Do a nice deep red. There we go. Very quickly changes colour. And then the rest of the fragrance in there. So I've been watching some Netflix and I've been watching some YouTube videos. I've just been, um, not obsessing, but I've been really looking into the Chris Watts case a bit more closely. There's a lady called, what's her name? Zoe. And she's got this really good channel where she's really analysed uh, Chris Watts's behaviour. She's a um, psychologist who has experience with narcissists and whatnot. So she's, um, yeah, very clever. And she's done this, right, so I'm just going to pour the red. She's done a lot of videos all about Chris Watson, his controlling weird ways and explain maybe why he did what he did to his own children and all. It just put like a much, this is a bit dismal, isn't it, this conversation? But it just put a bit more of a different slant on how I'd felt about this case before. It was just like... Um, yeah, she sort of explained his actions in a way that made, made it sort of really understandable, like how, because of the type of person that he is and all that, rather than just saying, oh, you know, he's an ass or whatever. Excuse my French. But, um, yeah, she sort of really went in depth. I'll try and leave the link below. But if... Um, right, let me just swirl lengthways. Because we're going to be cutting that way, I think. Ooh, this is a bit different. So I've been watching that, and then I have been watching this other show on Netflix, which is a bit boring for me. Let me find out what it's called, because I really enjoyed it. It is... Virgin River. It's a sort of slow-moving drama, kind of... Um, girl moves into a sort of sleepy sort of town where not a lot really happens and it's just a slow moving story but I've been really enjoying it on very mellow day so at the moment our country's back in lockdown it just started today so um yeah that's fun so I'm just finding things that just keep me occupied obviously here because obviously the shop's not open and hasn't been open for some time but I'm still coming to make stuff because obviously mail order but yeah, I'm just listening to some things that I probably norm normally wouldn't. So yeah, this um, Virgin River is actually quite good. And there's also um, the new Letterman show, My Next Guest. I've been watching that as well. I just watched a Kim Kardashian one and now I'm on Robert Downey Jr. Okay, I'm going to bring you in and show you when I put the tops on this little soap. Okay, so I've cut them... I've actually cut a load of them in half just so I've got some extras and maybe I can use them for samples. So these are going to go on the top. 
which I've measured out where they're going to go. So let's not cock this up. Okay, so first one in there. So it's the election going on yesterday in the States, so I hope you're all um, alright. <laughs> we won't elaborate on that one, we don't need to go election crazy in the comments either because I just, I don't want to do that. This is a political channel, so don't do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, just now I'm thinking of you all and I don't have an opinion on politics because it ain't my thing, you know. But uh, I can sympathise with everybody and how you all feel, regardless of what side you are on. Um, yeah, that's all we need to say about that. Same thing happens in this country, you know, like when election time comes along. It's just a media frenzy and I don't buy into the media either. So that's why I don't really follow politics because I don't like their agenda, you know. But each to their own. Some people love it and that's great, but I'm not a politics girl. I just, uh, it ain't in my uh, existence, you know, day to day. I don't listen to the news and I turn it all off because I'm not interested. It's just not really part of my life, you know. Obviously it's part of my life, the way that the countries are being governed and things like that. But, um, you know, the day to day running of my life is run by me, <laughs> not my government or the government rather, it's I govern my own existence, as we all do. So I don't like to get caught up in the trash talk that goes on all the time. I just like to keep peaceful and watch things that make me feel happy, not things that make me feel angered or anxious, you know? That's just the type of gal I am. I just don't like anything that creates havoc or uh, news frenzies then. So yeah, I do tend to watch a lot of old drivel <laughs> and some good stuff. I like watching lots of the Joe Rogan podcasts are good. I watch a lot of his stuff and I watch, yeah, quite, still watching a bit of true crime. I'm not watching as much as I used to, but I do still watch it. I really like listening to Justin from You Are Creator. So I still watch that sort of stuff. And I watch Alba Weinman, who I love. She does all the regressions and Dolores Cannon's old videos. I get really into those. So yeah, I uh, sort of like to listen to all kinds of bits and pieces, but certainly not politics. I just find it just, oh, what's the point? I just don't want to be getting all wound up because it's too media led and they have an agenda and that's the way that is. But yeah, I like to just have a peaceful little existence. People might call me uh, ignorant. Call me what you like. <laughs> I really don't care. I really don't care what people think about me not being into politics. Some people love it, you know, it's just each to their own. Anyway, that is that. And I'll have a little tidy up after I finish filming, but that's Christmas Tree Farm, which I think you can kind of see, okay, if I lift it a little bit and then put it down again. <laughs> I'll be back to cut it in the morning. I shall see you later. ta -ta. Hello, I'm back. Okay, you're going to cut this. He's going to cut it. Another uh, soap, I just cut um, Snowdrift, 
So I've made a huge 10 kilo block of that one, but it's just a plain white soap, so I didn't film that. But this one, we are ready to now cut this. So hopefully I've got my, yeah, that's okay. So I have to make sure, because these little blocks that are on the sides, you can have uh, all different sizes, and I just always need to make sure I've got the right one, because there's two that are very, very similar, but one's ever so slightly higher, but it would make these too big. So it looks like I've got my lines in the right place, which is good. So there's the first loaf. They're only sort of mini loaves, and then again, like I said, these are chunks. These are nice little rectangle chunks. They're about six centimetres wide by... Let's have a look. Mm, yeah, six high, six wide, and then the depth, which I think... Oh, let me snap rollers here. It is going to be around four and a half... Yeah, about four and a half centimetres wide. Like, so each little chunk is six by six by 4.5. I get asked a lot what size my uh, soaps are. Normally I have inch cuts. My old cutter that I've just cut snowdrift on is an inch and a quarter or something like that. Um, but yeah, the tank cut, I've got an inch tank cutter. Oh, I've just chopped the trees off the bottom of it. Drop the stumps, they're all right, but, hmm, okay, we've got the tops on, okay, we can probably take those off. Just slightly out of sync there, okay, and we've got the little end that I always have on these for samples, so I have this strip that I'll cut into samples, okay, just pop that one to the side, and... Then I just need to get this other one measured up right so that I cut the right size chunk. Okay, so there's the first one. So here we go. It looks like this. Kind of cute. And they are about five ounces. Same as the other ones, but just obviously a chunk and not a um, regular soap bar. 156 grams right now, but that obviously makes a difference having the embed on the top, but they're generally about, hmm, that's actually quite a lot bigger than normal, but okay. They are nice. I do like the chunks. I do like the chunks. I've got to admit I have missed these. I was just watching some of the, um, some more of the Chris Watts case. <laughs> it's just crazy. There's um, that lady I mentioned yesterday. Let me find her. Her name, or her channel name, I got it wrong, I think. She's actually called Li um, Live Abuse Free. Not Live <laughs> Abuse Free. It's what I, how I was reading it. It's completely wrong. So it's Live Abuse Free. So she's like, um... She is a therapist and she runs a uh, business that helps people who have suffered at the hands of narcissists and whatnot. So, yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> Not live abuse. <laughs> Good grief. Okay. So, apparently Chris Watts was a major narcissist which is why he did what he did not to mention also that he was a sociopath and maybe a psychopath <laughs> well he got to be all kinds of things hadn't he to do what he did but yeah it's um it's not getting into the gore it's sort of um it's just this lady she's really really good at analyzing the whole case and I, it's just really interesting to listen to an, a, prof, a professional's opinion then I like it. Okay, that's that one. And then I'm trying my best to avoid the news. Because <laughs> obviously things are all up in the air at the moment and going a bit crazy. And I don't want that entering my psyche, if you see what I mean. So avoiding all of that. And I was just going to watch Poltergeist 2. <laughs> there was... um. 
a clip on YouTube I came across the other day and I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind watching that. Poltergeist 2 is a horrible film. I remember being a kid being really, really scared of it because I had braces when I was a kid and that kid in it gets his all his braces wrapped around his head. The evil and the devil come into the house. And at the time, it frightened me to death. I mean, thanks to my parents for letting me watch it. What were they thinking? It was giving me nightmares for years. Because I had my braces on for years. I can't remember how many years it was, but I had braces on my teeth. And, um, yeah. My dad, the first film we ever watched when we got our first video recorder was Jaws, which is probably why I love Jaws so much. But um, me and my sister Tracy, the one we lost, um, we were Jaws fanatics. And every Christmas we'd buy each other a piece of Jaws me memorabilia or something to do with sharks. <laughs> which is quite funny, considering, yeah, that was the first video that we hired from the video store. Jaws. I still love it. I still love it. It doesn't matter when it comes on TV, I'll still watch it. <laughs> it's just one of the best films ever. Okay, this smells really nice. I think I might have to snag a couple of these for myself. Let's see. They're cute. Cute little chunks. Just took delivery of my stainless steel table as well. I'll show you that in a second. I'll try and turn you around. And it's got some nice, a nice big... Sorry, my battery just died there. Just finish off. There's only three chunks to cut. Kind of nice, huh? I just trimmed up the other ones. I'll show you a finished chunk. So let me show you what they're like when they're trimmed and ready to go out to the curing room. So I just trim up all the edges and I chamfer, yeah, chamfer the edges and just uh, use my planer that I got off of Etsy to just trim all those edge pieces so they're not sharp on the ends. And then I just trim all around and plane off or any sort of lumpy bits and that kind of thing. So there we go. Here is Christmas tree farm and I will upload some nice pictures for the end and I'll see you Ooh, when will I see you next week sometime I expect I'll think of some more videos to do. Okie doke, I will see you soon. Ta ta.